All right, so imagine if someone asked you to sketch this function. Uh, there's a cos in there, minus a sine in there, and plus a cos in there. Uh, now, it could be 2.5 and negative 1.9 or 2.3. It might be something more like uh, this. It doesn't really matter. It's a bit daunting to begin with, but let's take a look at what that function would actually look like. It actually looks pretty regular. It just looks like a sine or a cosine function that's been shifted a little bit or translated a little bit. Um, I wonder if this can be expressed as a single trig function, either a cos function or a sine function. Okay, so what we're doing here is expressing a sum of trig functions as a single function. Now, that example I showed you had a cos function, a sine function, and a cos function. That was a sum of three. Uh, we're just going to do a sum of two. And obviously, if you can add two together, you'll be able to add three together after that. So here are the two trig functions that I'm going to add together to make a single trig function. Uh, a cos x plus b sine x. You can see uh, it's just x with the cos, not x plus something. It's just x with sine, not x plus something. And there's two different values out in the front, two different amplitudes for cos and sine. All right, now I'm going to draw a Cartesian plane, and I'm going to move across the plane to a point that is A from the origin, and I'm going to move up to a point that is B, and that will give me a point here called point AB. Okay, now from point AB, I'm going to draw myself a triangle, right, and put that in there. Now, I'm going to call this value r, and r is going to be really important for this whole exercise here. I'm going to say that r squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. That much is pretty obvious. All right, now, if I put a little angle in here, uh, now, not x, uh, some other angle, uh, let's just call it, say, theta. Um, now, that can be written as uh, cos and sine. So I can say that cos theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, A over R, and sine theta is equal to B over R, opposite over hypotenuse. So now I have this, A cos X plus B sine X, and I have this stuff here. R squared equals A squared plus B squared, cos theta equals A over R, and sine theta equals B over R. Now, what I'm going to do is something a little bit strange. I'm going to introduce the letter R into this equation. And I'm going to do it in a sneaky kind of way. Uh, so I'm going to say this is equal to R bracket. Uh, let's make sure I get this right. A cos X plus B sine X. And now you might be saying to yourself, wait a minute, that's not true. A cos x plus B sine x is not equal to R A cos x B sine x. But it will be if I put another little R in here and another little R in here. Now this has the sneaky way of shoving R into this equation, which is A squared plus B squared, while not changing the equation, right? Because if I multiply R by A over R, that's just going to be 1, which will bring, which, so just be A, which will bring me back to this. And similarly here. Okay, next up, a over r. Well, a over r, we've established a over r is equal to cos theta, where theta is that angle right there, just an angle. All right, so we can now say that r over um, cos theta cos x plus, and we know that b over r is sine theta, sine x, and notice that this is cos theta, and this is cos x, they're different, and this is sine theta, and this is sine x, they're different. Uh, but you should be able to dive into your um, booklet of trig identities and notice that this is an identity that we should be familiar with. It is a difference identity, and we can now write this as r um, cos x minus theta. Check your difference identities if you, if you don't believe that. Now I've shown you how to prove it, but the important stuff is lying in this box here. 
If we have two functions, a cos x plus b sin x, we can say that that is equal to r cos x minus theta, where r is equal to uh, the square root of a squared plus b squared, uh, cos theta equals a over r, and sin theta equals b over r. All right, there is another thing that we can put in a box like that. It looks very similar. So this is another way to add the same two functions together. So if we take a cos x plus b sin x, which is the same as what we just did there, we can write that it's equal to r sine, not cos, x plus beta, so plus, not minus, beta, not theta, where r equals the root of a squared plus b squared, that is the same, uh, but cos beta is equal to b over r, not a over r, and sine beta is equal to a over r, not b over r. So why the subtle differences when we move from adding them together to get a cos function and adding them together to get a sine function? Well, it comes down to this new angle, beta, not theta. Now, where's that new angle coming from? Well, we take our Cartesian plane and we draw in a new triangle, this one here and we use this angle instead of that angle. Now, if we do that, we're going to get a cos theta is equal to this length here, which is b over r, and we'll get sine beta, which is equal to this length here, which is a over r, and we can use that angle instead of that angle. Now, why addition instead of subtraction? Well, if you take those values, and do the same kind of procedure that we did here, you won't get a, a difference identity, you'll get an addition identity. I'm not going to go through that here, but that's what will happen. Now, these two boxes are very important. They allow you to add two trig functions that look kind of like that to get something like that, and they allow you to add two trig functions that look something like that to get something like that. So I'm going to run you through this example here. I regret writing my rules in the center of the screen, but it is what it is. Uh, let's get started. Express cos x minus root 3 sine x in the form r cos x minus theta. It really is going to be as simple as kind of just applying this rule here. So first up, I need to know what r is. r is equal to the square root of our a value, 1 squared, um, plus our b value, which is negative root 3. Uh, squared. Now that means that it's going to be r is equal to 1 plus 3, the square root of 1 plus 3, which is 2. So our r value in this case is going to be 2. Right, now what else do I need to know? I need to know that cos theta is equal to a over r, uh, and sine theta is equal to b over r. Okay, so let's sub in some values here. We know that cos theta is equal to a1 over r2. So solving that, uh, just draw ourselves a little unit uh, or standard triangle. We have pi on 3 there because it's adjacent over hypotenuse is 1 half. So two solutions. Uh, it could be here or it could be here. So it could be, theta could be pi on 3 or it could be negative pi on 3. Now you're probably thinking, why are we using negative pi on 3? Why don't we work the other way around, pi on 3, 2 pi on 3, 3 pi on 3, 4 pi on 3, and call it 5 pi on 3? Well, the reason for that is because we're trying to shift a cos function, and we can shift it a little bit, negative pi on 3, or we can shift it a lot, 5 pi on 3, but the result would be the same. Okay, now, I don't know which of these is correct. And in fact, only one of them is. So we better figure out which one is. And we can do that by using this second one here. So we know that sine theta is equal to uh, b over r, which is negative root 3 over r, which is 2. Now, again, we use this little thing here. So sine theta equals opposite over hypotenuse. Uh, root 3 on 2. So we... we we assumed that it would be pi on 3, right? But it's negative. So C, A, S, T. Negative sine functions don't appear in this quadrant. They only appear 
in this quadrant and this quadrant, right? So now we have a bit of a puzzle because our cosine functions appeared um, here and here. Our sine functions appear here and here. So our final solution must appear here, the common quadrant, the one that they both have in common. So our final answer, theta is equal to uh, negative pi on 3. And we're rejecting that one because of the way that these act in tandem to give us that single quadrant. Okay, uh, we are done. We can now just finish this whole thing off and say, therefore, the thing that we were talking about is equal to r2 cos x minus minus pi on 3. Which, of course, is 2 cos x plus pi on 3. Okay, now, you can do all sorts of things from here. You could just sketch that. So, looking at this, that looks really complicated to sketch, but this looks really easy to sketch, so that should be fine. You might get asked questions like, what's the range of this function? Well, the range of this function is its highest value. You can see it has an amplitude of 2, no um, vertical shift. So, it's going to have a maximum of 2 and a minimum of 2. Um, you might get asked other questions as well, uh, but... It all comes down to the fact that you know how to deal with these functions really well. You don't know how to deal with those functions very well. So if you can use this process, if you can use this formula to get from there to here, you can then deal with something that you can better understand. Okay, that's how you express a sum of trig functions as a single trig function.